Yo, what's going on everybody? Uh, Caleb again, and I just wanna be honest out of the gate, cause it's been one of those weeks for me where it's just like, man, life sucks sometimes. You ever find yourself there? Just this past week, just felt like there was a whole lot of different random junk that's been happening. Like for me personally, it's been, uh, had a friend pass away last week unexpectedly, and now um, his family needs to figure out what moving forward looks like. And I have two really close friends that both lost grandparents last week. I have a friend who got dumped by his girlfriend. I have a tons of um, friends that are seniors that they just got the end of their senior year taken away from them and there's nobody and nothing that will ever be able to give that back. And sometimes life just sucks. And I know that those are the things that are on my radar and you probably have some different things that are on your radar, but it's so easy to all of a sudden just kind of feel all of the weight of life, all of the weight of the problems that we have, the situations that we can't think through, the things that we can't see through. And then so often, at least this is what I do and, and you might do it too, just to give your brain a little bit of a mental break you either hop on Netflix or, or sometimes more commonly, just cause it's more accessible. I'll get my phone out and I'll start scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or whatever. And as I'm like low key running through all of these situations in the back of my mind, I start essentially reading through everybody's highlight reel and comparing the two and start to ask questions like, why isn't my life like their life? What am I doing wrong? Why do they have peace and I don't? Why are they happy and I'm not? And then as you're scrolling through Instagram or you're scrolling through TikTok and you're starting to play the compare game, um, either consciously or subconsciously, you start to tell yourself this truth of, hey, if my problems would just go away, if this could just fizzle out, if this could just happen and get off of my plate, if someone could just give me my senior year back, if I could just have more, more time with that family member, if those family members would just stop fighting, if my boyfriend or girlfriend would just get back together with me, I would be okay. If my problems would leave, that I would have peace. And this is a, a sobering truth and sometimes a difficult truth, but it's so important to hear this, that everybody has problems. And I'll even take it a step further. Not only does everybody have problems, but everybody has problems all the time. Everybody always has problems. As long as you're sucking wind, there is going to be situations that are sucking the wind out of you. It's just part of life. And as long as you keep waiting for your problems to magically kind of solve themselves or fizzle out or go away until you finally have the peace that you desire, the peace that your heart just yearns for, you will never stop waiting. Here's the truth. Peace isn't the absence of problems, but it is the presence of God. Let me say that again. Peace isn't the absence of problems, but it's the presence of God. So often we tend to like think about all of our circumstances and think that peace is just another thing that gets added onto it. Peace isn't an external reality, it's an internal reality. Peace isn't something that happens out here, it's something that happens in here. Here's how Jesus talks about it in uh, John chapter 14, this is verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Now I wanna give a little bit of context for this passage because it's so, so important. Right here, as Jesus is saying those words, he's eating the last meal that he'll get to eat with his disciples. And what he's been trying to explain to them for like the time leading up to that meal is that things are about to get real, real crazy. So they're eating the last supper, they're eating their last meal together. Right after that, um, Jesus and a few of them are gonna go over to a garden and they're gonna pray. From that garden, Jesus is gonna be taken and tortured and then ultimately killed. And there's gonna be a crazy slice of time there where Jesus' disciples are going to have a terrible time of following him. They're gonna be running away, they're gonna be denying him. There's gonna be, frankly, a whole lot more problems than they know what to do with. And in fact, it's true because none of them handled it well. None of them stayed true to Jesus through all of those circumstances despite the fact that they promised him that they would and Jesus already knew all of that was gonna happen and before it did he said this I give you this gift of peace of mind and heart and it had nothing to do with the, the disciple circumstances in fact the disciple circumstances were really really bad Christians were not very popular that are Jesus followers were not really popular at that particular time but Jesus says you will have peace not because you have control over your circumstances, not because there won't be problems to navigate, not because you won't have stuff that you can't see through. You're gonna have peace in here because I will never leave you. And God extends the very same promise to you, a promise of peace if you stay close to him, if you have relationship with him. The extent to what you are experiencing peace 
is the extent to which you are connected to God. So here's my challenge. Read the Bible. Read the Bible so you can hear truth directly from God about him, about you, and about your circumstances so you can start to see them more accurately. Two, pray. Not because Jesus doesn't already know your circumstances, but because he wants relationship with you. And it's that relationship, that peace will be a natural byproduct from. It's going to naturally grow out of that relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, some of you are like, hey man, I don't really know how to read the Bible. I don't really know how to pray. And I definitely don't really know how to get started right now. Cool. Hop on Spotify, YouTube, however you stream music um, and pop on a worship playlist. Let those lyrics kind of sink down into you and then raise them up to God as a prayer that you don't necessarily know how to articulate just yet and let that be your next step. Just one last thing that I have you remember, a step towards God is a step towards peace.